At the first video about diodes, we discussed the mechanisms leading to the formation of a depletion layer near a PN junction on an atomic level. At this video, I would like to visualize those procedures at slightly larger dimensions. The animations used here were created with the help of a Java application, which is available at the project page. Let's have a look at a single crystal layer with 100 to 122 atoms, which conforms approximately to 89 to 47 nanometers. The upper endoped half of the crystal contains 52 pentavalent dopants and the lower p-doped half the same number of trivalent dopants. The number of impurity atoms is approximately 1 per 117 silicon atoms. In praxis, this rate is just between 1 impurity atom per 10,000 and 1 impurity atom per 10 million silicon atoms. Using such a high number of atoms in an animation requires an enormous computing power. Furthermore, single atoms, respectively the migration of holes and electrons would be hard to observe. The simulation software uses some more simplifications. Let's have a look at an impurity atom inside of the upper N-doped half. Like explained at the video about doping of semiconductors, the pentavalent impurity atom inside of the silicon crystal has one extra electron which is just weakly bond to the atomic core. Those electron can move into the shell of a nearby silicon atom by what a positively charged impurity ion and a negatively charged silicon ion are formed. The positively charged impurity ion is marked with dark red color and the negatively charged silicon ion is drawn as a light blue ball. Let's observe the movement of the extra electron inside of the crystal lattice. Following the force caused by the electrostatic field, the electron should move back to the positively charged impurity ion. Those directional movement caused by the electric field is superposed by thermal movement of the electron. Thermal energy originates from the individually random or disordered motion of atoms or electrons. Hence, the thermal energy causes a random movement to one of the four nearby atoms. At the single layer used at this animation, there are just three nearby atoms painted. You can have a closer look at the three-dimensional crystal structure of silicon at another video. If the thermal energy is larger than the potential energy inside of the electric field, the electron can move away from the impurity atom. Inside of a real crystal, all electrons of all atoms can move around. Consequently, the probability of finding electrons of the nearby atoms increases near the positively charged impurity ion. Hence, the gradient of the electric field near the impurity ion is decreasing, by what the migration of the extra electron is favored. The simulation software calculates the movement of the electron between the nearby atoms. Firstly, the force caused by all charged particles inside of the crystal layer is determined. Charges with the same sign cause repelling forces, while those with different signs cause attracting forces. The weakened electric field near a positively charged impurity ion is considered in such a way that the attracting force inside of a small radius around the electron is reduced by the software, hence the migration is favored. A force with a random direction and an absolute value between 0 and x representing the thermal energy of the electron is added to the sum of the electrostatic forces. The electron is moving to those nearby atom which is closest to the angle of the resulting force. 
let's have a close look at a trivalent impurity atom inside of the p-doped half of the crystal. If an electron moves from a nearby silicon atom into the shell of the impurity atom, two ions are formed too. The impurity atom is transformed into a negatively charged ion and the silicon atom becomes a positively charged ion. Besides the movement of the electron between the two atoms, a chemical bond between two silicon atoms has to be cracked and a new bond is formed between the positively charged silicon ion and the negatively charged impurity ion. Those process has already been discussed in a very detailed way at the video about doping of semiconductors. Once again, electrostatic forces are acting on the electrons of the nearby atomic shells, pointing into the direction of the positively charged silicon ion and away from the negatively charged ion of the impurity atom. Caused by thermal energy, another electron can move from another silicon atom to the positively charged ion. The force caused by the thermal energy is acting into random direction, hence any of the nearby silicon atoms can transfer one electron to the ion, by what the position of the ion is migrating to one of those atoms. There is no positive charge moving between the atoms, but electrons are swept between the atomic shells. Because of the fact that chemical bonds have to be cracked and formed again, those process is slower than the movement of the extra electrons inside of the n-type region. Hence, the software isn't calculating a new position of a hole with every step. Randomized breaks are inserted. To keep the computing power low, the software doesn't calculate the forces acting on all electrons of all atoms. Instead, the force acting on a positive charge inside of the crystal lattice is calculated to get the direction of the next electron transfer. Let's start the simulation and observe the movement of electrons and holes. The extra electrons, respectively the holes, start moving randomly through the crystal layer, away from the impurity atoms. Negatively charged impurity ions are formed at the p-doped lower half and positively charged impurity ions at the n-doped upper half of the crystal. The speed of movement of the light blue marked electrons is significantly higher than those of the light red marked holes. If one of the extra electrons is getting close to a hole, the attracting force acting between those two charges increases, getting stronger than the force caused by thermal movement. If electron and hole are side by side, they recombine to a chemical bond between two neutral silicon atoms. Those recombination process reduces the number of mobile charge carriers inside of the crystal layer. Caused by the different speed of movement of holes and electrons, the places of those recombination processes are predominantly inside of the lower half of the crystal. The extra electrons are moving faster and deeper into the p-doped half than holes to migrate into the n-doped half. Let's accelerate the simulation until an equilibrium is established and no more recombination processes occur. Let's stop the simulation and count the charges inside of the two halves of the crystal. As you can see, there is a higher number of positive charges inside of the upper half. There are 52 positively charged impurity atoms and 36 extra electrons, 
by what those half of the crystal is 16 times positively charged. At the lower half we can count 52 negatively charged impurity atoms and 36 positively charged holes by what those half is 16 times negatively charged. Let's divide the crystal evenly into 8 zones and count the charges. As you can see, the outer zones are almost neutral in ZUM, against what the zones near the junction are charged strongly. By observing the number of mobile charge carriers, we can see that there are almost none of them near the junction, while there is still a high number of electrons respectively holes at the outer zones of the crystal. The zone around the junction, where almost no mobile charges are located, is called depletion layer and it causes the behavior of a semiconductor diode. An electric field is established at the depletion layer, which inhibits the movement of electrons from the n-doped half into the p-doped half of the crystal. Let's connect the diode to a DC voltage source. The positive terminal is connected to the p-doped half and the negative terminal is connected to the n-doped half of the crystal. Two things are affected by the voltage source. On the one hand, an electric field is established, which pushes the electrons from the n-doped half into the p-doped half and on the other hand, additional electrons are injected into the n-doped half, while they are removed from the p-doped half, leading to the formation of additional holes. Because of the fact that the electrons are pushed downward at this animation, the holes are moving upward. If the strength of the external electric field is high enough, moving charges are pushed into the area near the junction and once more recombination processes occur. Mobile electrons and holes annihilate near the junction. The number of electrons respectively holes inside of the crystal is kept constant by the voltage source because electrons are injected into the n-doped half and holes are created by the extraction of electrons inside of the p-doped half. In ZUM there is a movement of electrons through the diode from the negative to the positive terminal of the voltage source, hence an electric current is running through the device. The electrons are not moving straight ahead through the crystal. The thermal energy still affects a random movement, which superposes the straight movement caused by the external electric field. This results in a zigzag course of the electrons from the top to the bottom, respectively of holes from the bottom to the top of the crystal. With increasing voltage, the electrons are drifting more straightened through the crystal and the rate of recombination processes increases. A higher current is running through the device. Let's alter the polarity of the voltage source and observe the movement of the charge carriers. Now the electrons are pushed to the upper and doped half of the crystal by the action of the external electric field. Additionally, electrons are injected into the p-doped half and they are removed from the n-doped half. The injected electrons at the p-doped half are annihilated by recombination processes with the holes inside of this half by what? The number of holes decreases. The number of moving charges inside of the crystal decreases. Let's count the charges inside of the different zones once again. As you can see, there is a disequilibrium of charges at a larger area around the junction. The depletion layer has grown. The zone inside of the p-doped half is negatively charged, while those inside of the n-doped half is positively charged. 
the electric field near the junction is pointing into the same direction as the external field of the voltage source. Both fields inhibit the migration of holes from the p-doped half, respectively electrons from the n-doped half. There are no moving charges around the junction. No current is running through the device. The diode is reverse biased. If we increase the voltage output, the number of moving charges inside of the crystal decreases. The depletion layer becomes larger. If we decrease the voltage output once again, the electric field stored inside of the diode is stronger than the external field caused by the voltage source. Consequently, electrons are extracted from the positive terminal of the voltage source, which is connected to the n-doped half. Vice versa, electrons are entering the negative terminal of the voltage source at the p-doped half of the diode. Electrons are moving from the positive to the negative terminal of the voltage source and the number of moving charges inside of the crystal is increasing. Those process stops as soon as the action of the electric fields caused by the voltage source, respectively the diode, are cancelled out once again. A diode is acting like a capacitor while connected to an alternating voltage source. In praxis, there is still a low current running through a diode, even if it is reverse biased. Those current is caused by another process occurring inside of the crystal lattice. Because of the thermal energy, the atoms of the crystal lattice are oscillating around their position of rest. If those energy is high enough, a chemical bond can crack and an electron hole pair is formed. Many of those pairs recombine after a short span of time. Near the junction, the electric fields of the depletion layer and the voltage source are pointing into the same direction. The resulting field pulls electrons into the n-doped half, by what the holes are pushed into the p-doped half. The electron hole pairs are separated from each other by the electric field, hence an electron is moving from the negative to the positive terminal of the voltage source. If those pairs are recombining inside of one half of the crystal, no charge transfer takes place. The higher the temperature of the crystal, the more charges are generated and the higher the current running through the diode becomes, even if it is reverse biased. You can read more stuff about diodes at the project page. There you can find the Java application, which makes it possible to do your own virtual experiments. Thanks for watching and bye for now.